Hi, I'm Dr. Bertice Berry, and I want to tell you a story. It's not my story, but it's our story, because like any good story, they all connect. It's a big story, so stay with me. It starts with Fanny Kimball. Fanny Kimball was a famous English actress in the 1800s. She was beautiful, and she was the grand dame of the stage. She had many suitors, and lots of people wanted to marry her. She accepted the proposal of a man named Pierce Butler. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky, because Fanny was an abolitionist, and unbeknownst to her, Pierce Butler was a slave owner. This man owned hundreds of enslaved people, owned. He inherited them from his grandfather, Pierce Butler. Pierce Butler was a general and in the Revolutionary War. He was also friends with um, Aaron Burr. In fact, when Aaron Burr shot Hamilton, he escaped from New York and came to St. Simon's Island and stayed on the plantation, the cotton plantation. He inherited two plantations, a rice plantation and a cotton plantation. So Pierce Butler marries Fanny and Fanny doesn't know he's an abolitionist and then she finds out because they're living in New York and they're fine houses. And by the way, a lot of the money from the South went to the North. So when people want to talk about the North and the South, it's like, stop, stop playing. Anyway, so Fanny says to Pierce, you need to let me go see these plantations. And he's like, no, 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 they're wonderful. We take good care of our people. We love them. You don't know what you're talking about. People don't really know how good it is. They're treated well and we treat them like our own family. So she keeps going and finally after a couple of years, she convinces him to let her go to the plantation. And she goes to the one right down the road from me. And she stays there in the, from the very first day. It is horrible. And she can see the conditions of the enslaved people. And she's like, nobody should ever live like this. So Fanny eventually uh, divorces her husband, has to leave her children with him because those are the laws of the time. She writes a book. She is the only person to have lived on, well, only abolitionist to have lived on a plantation and write about it. Her book was so popular in, in England that people who had planned, wealthy people who had planned on backing their cousins in the South for the Civil War decided not to. Because between the sales of that book and her lectures, people were finding out firsthand what it was really like. And it was horrible. <sighs> so Fanny, while she was on this plantation, I should also take you down this other road, teaches a young boy named Alexander. Alexander has children and when slavery is over, he has taught all of his children to read and write because Fanny taught him his letters and he learned to read and write, he taught all of his children to read and write. Deaconess Anna Alexander, who's the first black deacon in the Episcopal Church and the first and only saint, black saint in the Episcopal Church, taught all the children in that town throughout the Depression and help them to go off and get into college. So she's an amazing, amazing life <clears throat> that is also connected to Fanny Kimball. So Fanny's story is available. You can get her book. It is called The Journal of a Residence on a Plant Georgian Plantation. Um, I have a first edition copy. I have some other copies. And this year, the beginning of the year, January 1st, it was available on Audible. So now I play that in my car and I ride down to the plantation and I listen to the actress telling the story of Fanny Kimball, reading the story of Fanny Kimball. And if I time it just right, I can get to the house right when she begins to describe this house and what she saw and the conditions of these people. I should tell you this. As amazing as Fanny's story is, as powerful as it is, as you have to understand that if, you know, if it weren't for Fanny, things would be very, very different today. There'd be a lot more monuments to, to look at and talk about taking down. Fanny says some of the vilest, most racist things I've ever heard. Her descriptors of black people were not kind in the least. So where do I put Fanny? I know as a sociologist that she is a product of her time and that norms can prevent the condemnation of anything right and can make anything wrong. I know this. But I also know that this person who held the beliefs, many of the beliefs of the people of that time, still understood that no one should be enslaved to anyone else. 
there are those who say, when are you going to stop with taking these down? And shouldn't we hold up the good history? And shouldn't we look and find it? There are good points and there are points that are mixed like Fanny's story. And there are points that are just absolutely horrible, horrible and evil. Somebody said, well, what's next? The Statue of Liberty? Like you can read on a wiki page that the Statue of Liberty has a shackle on her foot where she's breaking free. Hence Statue of Liberty, hence the gift in 1866, celebrating the abolition of slaves. This period of enslavement is complex and horrible and amazing and terrible. There are those who sought to do what was right. I'm always amazed that people say, well, you know, it's a product of the time. Well, how come that person knew that that was wrong and they fought to do everything, gave up everything for freedom? So when I'm weighing these whole stories, I look at them and I simply say, okay, Fanny's complex. We all are. There's some stuff in me that I need to work out. There's some stuff in you that you need to work out. We're not going to get there if we don't learn our history. We're not going to get there if we don't talk to one another. And we're really not going to get there if we keep clinging to a story that's just not true. You know how to weigh this. Were people trying to increase their own wealth? Because by the by, when Pierce Butler had to sell everything because he gambled his life away and the only real wealth he had wasn't in the land, it wasn't in the property, because you got those things by mortgaging enslaved people. That's right. We were mortgaged. And so that time that we commemorate in Savannah called the weeping time, where 436 people were sold away from their family members in a two-day period, they all came from Pierce Butler's plantation. Fanny did her best, even with her limited thinking. What could we do with all the books that exist and all the information that's around and all the stuff that we can read and learn and all the people whose stories are here, the people who've gone before us? I've gone way over my time today. But I want us to look deeper, not only in the stories of the past, but in the stories of our own self, in the stories of our life, in the stories of our family. Why? Because all of our stories connect. I love you. <laughs>